Well, package a day, keep the doctors away. In 2019, BenQ released the HT3550 4K projector. While it's still very good for the price, I personally find that the projector is still lacking. Well, now BenQ released the 3560. So, let's compare them. Since this unit is brand spanking new, let's unpack it together. I'll only do this with a 3560 because I don't want to waste your time in doing the 3550. So after cutting the seal with my oversized cutter, I proceed by picking the tongue out and open the box, obviously. And here you can see the black cable, it's thick with three prong connection and right beside it is the remote control in white. And in the black envelope is the calibration report card. More on that later. And finally, a whole stack of instruction manual and all kinds of paperwork. And now, without further ado, here comes the projector. As far as I'm concerned, I absolutely love the look of this projector. It's very interior design friendly, light and compact. You can simply flick the lens cover open like this, so you can see the end of the lens assembly from the front. Just in case you forgot what you've purchased, it says that's 4K HDR at the bottom of the lens. The top cover of the projector features directional arrow, settings button, input button, essentially all the functionalities you need to access when setting up the projector. And near the top left, there is this lid here. Let's open it up. This is where you can access the focus control, zoom, and also the vertical lens shift. Alas, there's still no horizontal lens shift. Moving on to the back of the projector, from the left, there's a 12 volt trigger where you can trigger your screen to go up and down, RS-232, that can be used for home automation, USB input for service, media reader, and audio out using 3.5 mil stereo cable. There's also Toslink SPDIF connector, followed by three HDMI inputs with the middle one compatible with audio return channel. And last but not least, there's a 2.5 amps USB input that you can use to power an optical cable or an active cable. The remote control fits nicely in my hand with gigantic buttons that are backlit and easy to see. Going back to the report card, this is supposed to be an individual calibration result. However, outside the serial number is being used as part of the report card. The report card has no data whatsoever that can be used by any professional calibrator. So outside being a novelty, I personally cannot see any use of this card whatsoever. Mostly because there's no data of what kind of screen they use, screen size, and the throw distance. And since most probably you will be using a screen that is completely different that's being used in BenQ while it's being measured, at the end of the day, you will still have to calibrate your projector as the calibration points will be different depending on the screen you use, the screen size, the throw distance, and so on and so forth. But hey, it's still a good start. I spy with my little eye. Just as a size comparison, I put my 3560 on top of my JVC RS3100. The 3560 is of course dwarfed by the RS3100, as you can see over here. The first thing I notice about the 3560 is that the lens shift can only go up but not go down. While most people will install it upside down from the ceiling, therefore it's not going to create any problem. But in my case, I have to move the projector physically down by about two feet for it to project properly. And for this test, I'm using Stuart Studio Tech 130 G4. And while some people will say that nobody's gonna buy a $6,000 screen for a $2,000 projector, the fact remains that if you want to review a projector properly, then you have to use a proper screen. This way, the screen is not going to be ever detrimental to the result of the review. Also, in order to feed the cleanest video signal possible, I used my Kaleidoscape to watch Super Mario Brothers in order to test color saturation and color space. The Pope's Exorcist in order to watch Fat Russell Crow and Evil Dead Rise in order to check for shadow detail and black level capabilities. 
something that I've never seen reproduced properly on any DLP projector. What surprises me though is how well the black levels and shadow details can be handled by the BenQ HD 3560, which in return enhances the enjoyment of watching this movie. And what started as a joke of watching this fat Russell Crowe movie, it turns out to be a very enjoyable and also at the same time demo quality movie. Measuring the projector, the accuracy of this projector is actually pretty good, especially considering the price. Can a calibration make it better? Of course, that's always the case. But you can get away without doing professional calibration. Provided, of course, you are using a good quality neutral screen, such as my Stuart film screen Studio Tech 130 G4. And as a generalization, the worse your screen is, the more you are crippling your projector's performance. Of course, reviewing the 3560, I cannot avoid comparing it with the 3550. While from the appearance standpoint, they are pretty much identical, I would classify the 3560 in a completely different realm than the 3550, picture quality wise. The color depth performance between the two is very clear. While there's nothing really wrong with the 3550, the 3560 yields a visibly deeper and more saturated colors which in return gives a better contrast and a more three-dimensional picture. The appearance of better blacks thanks to the 1000 zone local dimming is very impressive as I've never witnessed a black level this faithfully reproduced by six segment RGB RGB DLP projector. And as far connections go, you can easily compare and contrast from this photo here. The top is the 3560 and the bottom one is the older 3550. Now let's have a look at the top cover between 3550 and 3560 basically there's no difference whatsoever with one notable difference sound by trivolo this positively affects the internal speaker sound by using sound tuning by bon jovi dps completely unrelated with this bon jovi of course although most of you won't use the internal sound system but hey at least it's there and it's good and now i'm going to move on to the recommended settings for your 3560 I'm going to start with the standard dynamic range. Remember that this is based on the 3560 projected onto Stewart Film Screen Studio Tech 130 G4 with 1.3 gain with a throw distance of 10 feet projecting 100 inch image. And now it's the same thing, but with HDR settings. If need be, obviously you can just screen grab the settings, both for SDR and HDR. So what's my verdict? The 3560 is a very, very, extremely capable projector at $2,000 Canadian or $1,500 US MSRP. No, it's not as good as my GVC RS3100, but it's also only a tenth of the price of my GVC. This is also quite an improvement over the 3550 that I can actually recommend people who use 3550 to upgrade to 3560. And as long as you are not prone to DLP rainbow effect, it's going to be very difficult, if not impossible, for any projector at this price or even at double of this price to beat the performance value proposition of this 3560. Now we have reached the end of this review slash comparison slash settings video. Please leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Also, please like and share this video and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye. Happy. Happy.